Breaking, Imo State Governor, Hope Yuzadinma is behind the court refusal to grant Matsi Namdi Kanu bail, Dut, American Veterans of Igbo Descent says. Below is part of the letter from American Veterans of Igbo Descent to Hope Yuzadinma. Dear Governor Hope Yuzadinma, we are American military veterans of Igbo descent, avid who are currently serving or have served honorably in the United States Armed Forces. We have observed with alarming shock the level of disdain and inglorious actions you exhibit against people of Igbo descent since you became the governor in 2019, hence our collective decision to write you this open letter on the following terms. Your Excellency, the wave of wanton killings and loss of lives in Imo State is really astronomical. You are the chief security officer of Imo State and your decision to kill Imo youths with your militias and imported terrorists is down-to-earth infamous. Since you deceptively brought in Al. Mujahid Aseri de Kubo's terrorists into Imo State in the guise of Ebubigu, Imo State has not known peace and we do not know your reasons for the killing of Imo youths, hundreds of innocent youths got arrested for nothing, other than your open disdain for the Igbos and the people of Imo State in particular. Ordinarily, Ebubigu is supposed to be a security outfit with specific objectives of securing lives and properties in Igbo land against external forces but Your Excellency decided to use Sari's terrorists against your people. It really does not matter who currently occupies Douglas House as governor. Governance is a continuum and there is no legal and or moral justification for your decimation of Imo state youths. We have had several governors in Imo state since the country's return to democracy in the year 1999 and no governor has such records of extrajudicial killings of the good people of Imo state like you. Another worrisome show of contempt for Igbos is your deceitful and covert conspiracies and misadventures against the release of Matsi Namdi Kanu, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, since his infamous extraordinary rendition from Kenya into Nigeria in the year 2021 and the persecution that ensued. It has become obvious that you do not want Matsi Namdi Kanu released from the unlawful incarceration the federal government of Nigeria subjected him to. While we are aware that several meritorious applications had before now been made to the trial federal high court judge for the release of Matsi Namdi Kanu on bail. We have come to the ugly realization that Your Excellency is behind the continual refusal of such bail applications. Your sinister and clandestine motives aimed at seeing that Matsi Namdi Kanu does not enjoy his constitutional right to bail is another show of hatred for the Igbos. You are aware that in so far as Matsi Namdi Kanu remains unlawfully detained in the Nigeria Security Services facilities, there would be no peace in Igbo land and the spate of youth restiveness and violence would know no bounds. Do you care the negative impact of the Monday sit-at-home orders on Eastern Nigeria commerce and the lives that Igbos lose for any mistaken disobedience to such orders? Nigerians know how the infamous attempt at Kanu's life under Operation Python Dance was planned and executed and we do not know what profits you enjoy from these sinister arrangements against Igbo peace and cohesion. While we regret the entirety of your acts and deeds against Igbo Nation and your secret vows to ensure that Matsi Namdi Kanu rots in detention, we honestly believe that you can tender an apology and turn over a new leaf. It is never too late to return peace to Imo State in particular and it pays nobody that our youths are killed daily, except Your Excellency has other reasons for the decision. But then, what records would you leave behind after your governance? Or do you think that nobody would remember what you did as governor? The full soft copy of the letter is attached. Thank you so much for watching. The letter below was written by Igbos who are military men in the United States of America. Some of them are still military while some of them are retired. They wrote that letter to the stupid idiot in government house of Imo State, a man who believed that he has all it takes to kill Ibos and go through with it. And this is why I've got not to say that sometimes when I look at those people who these people who call themselves freedom fighters are laugh. In freedom fighting, they always have plan B, even plan C. I expected this man to be whistled away during the time of election. Governorship election in Imo State. 
but nobody did it. I will hear every day this one in Ezra, this one in Ezra, and there and there everywhere. I'm not query. Those who have the head don't have the cap, but those who have the cap don't have the head to wear it. That is exactly what is happening here. If not, also them might will not have that audacity to plan with him just like the way he planned with Buhari. These are enemies of Namde Kano. Tinubu says Namde Kano is his enemy from the beginning. It baffles me how our leaders who call themselves for Hanese, this is why I dislike them so much, pushed our people again to vote for that fool in Imo State with all the whole atrocities he committed. He want young people to vote for that fool. Why that useless pastor in Imo State? I've forgotten his name. I'll come for him in time to come. Kajo, his church members, I don't blame him because he has church members to vote for a blood sucking demon who has sucked the blood of our people. I told you more than 8,000 something people was more than in Imo State. Amnesty International confirmed, even though they claim it was 3,000 and the, the other 5,000 was missing. What nonsense! They are missing. Where are they? Upon that, you allow this man to become a, a governor for the second term. And some of you call yourself freedom fighters are busy, but then yourself as freedom fighters. In freedom fighting, they have peacemakers. They have those who will give you what you want if you refuse to tell the world peace. With all the atrocities so that them are committed, you shouldn't have allowed him to come into my state as a, as a governor again. That, was what, that is what is giving him the audacity to go to Asorok to plan if like against Namde Kano. Because he's their nightmare. If you don't know it now, he is their nightmare. All those ones that are in Europe making noise, wara, 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 they know nothing. They don't know rather they are government criminals working for government. Namde Kano is their nightmare. And this is why they want to get rid of him. But I've said this, I will continue to say it. I'm waiting for something. If anything goes wrong and nothing was done, I will know that. And nothing was done. And all those who have something to do, we are not encouraged to do it. Then I will know that this useless freedom fighting is nonsense. And I will be part of those who will never allow any of youth who are growing up to listen to any idiot about freedom fighting. How can a man, a peaceful man, betrayed? If he is behaving like a Bukaram or like flying terrorist, would they be able to betray him? It's because he was peaceful. He wanted it in a peaceful way because he doesn't want anybody die to die. But today, he has been in custody for three years after several courts have set him free. Some criminals, drug barons, are parading themselves as president in Nigeria. They are still keeping him in custody. Why one criminal, a 419er, in government out of Imo State, is busy parading himself in Asorok, planning with a, a drug baron who killed so many innocent South protesters to continue to keep Khan in custody. Like I said before, I am watching. Oh, hey, Biafra.